you're running sixth with a little bit over 3% support for an entrepreneur, and I know you, you pride yourself on that, that is not a good cost-benefit analysis. From what he's hearing on the ground, the polls underestimate our support, and we're going to grow and grow and peak when the voting starts. Oh, snap! Oh, snap! Oh, snap! How's it going, dudes and dudettes? My name is Sean, and welcome back to my channel, where, oh... Andrew Yang just corrected Chris Wallace, and it is beautiful. Now, I have to give it to Chris. He definitely did uh, more research than MSNBC ever thought about doing, right? So, he definitely does good at playing a devil's advocate, right? So, shout out to uh, Zach and Matt's show. They uh, they really got this got this up there really quickly. I like that. And, um, and this is going to be epic, so make sure that we can actually spread this video around because there's going to be some analysis, which elaborates on a lot of what Yang is saying uh, in between some of these clips. So, make sure you smack a like with some gravy you know what i'm saying share that button with some taters that way we can get into this and uh, for those of you who don't know uh the algorithm loves gravy so that's the reason why we have to have gravy on the like button you know what i'm saying just so you guys know anyways i don't want to take too much of your time let's go ahead and get right into the interview and uh i hope you guys enjoy some of these corrections it's epic product presidential candidate andrew yang welcome back to fox news sunday sir thanks for having me chris it's great to be here no one has invested more in Iowa than you have in these last few months. Let's take a look. Uh, you've held 151 events here and spent $5 million in ads. And yet, in the latest Real Clear Politics average of polls in this state, you're running sixth with a little bit over 3% support for an entrepreneur. And I know you, you pride yourself on that. That is not a good cost benefit analysis. Well, Chris, the last poll that people consider the most authoritative had us at 5% and rising, and we've been getting bigger crowds, higher energy. We're going to surprise a lot of people on caucus night on February 3rd. I can guarantee you that. I had a Democratic op operative right here in the state who said that from what he's hearing on the ground, the polls underestimate our support, and we're going to grow and grow and peak when the voting starts. Oh, snap! All right, so Yang handles it beautifully. He gets right into the, uh, excuse me for the notification, but he gets right into the actual heart of the matter. You know, the polls don't accurately show any candidate's real support. Polls are antiquated and done by phone line. I mean, 80% of them are. Remember how all the polls used to have Hillary Clinton in 2016 running away with the nomination? And look who's our president, you know what I'm saying? So Yang corrects him and... Uh, and for some odd reason, Chris Wallace, uh, I guess playing devil's advocate, just kind of goes right along with the establishment rules. So I don't know why to defend the DNC. It's kind of like your enemy as a Republican, Chris Wallace. <laughs> Good job on that. Anyways, let's go ahead and roll the rest of it. Oh, and before we roll the rest of it, I have to say, it, it was awful convenient for Chris Wallace to conveniently ignore some of the uh, polls that had Yang at 8 and 7 6% just here recently. That might not be complete an average, but when you look at an average, that doesn't really matter because all the polls are kind of skewed towards older people. So anyways, let's go ahead and get on, get on with it. Okay. Uh, you know a lot of candidates who don't do well say that. You've also spent a lot of time and a lot of money in New Hampshire. So let me ask you the, the direct hard question. If you don't finish in the top three or four in Iowa or New Hampshire, is it time to drop out? Well, you know, Chris, and many people who've been paying attention to this race know that we've been growing faster than any other candidate in campaign. We have resilient grassroots support, and we're going to be competing all the way through Super Tuesday and into the spring because we have a message that Americans know to be true, that we're in the midst of the greatest economic transformation in our country's history, and we need a new way forward that will actually work for Americans in every part of the country, from rural towns to big cities. Oh, snap! Why would he hang up his run? Why would he throw in the towel in the race when John Kerry was in his same boat? Worse off this time, and was it back in 06, 08? So Yang, once again, stays on top of it and dodges some of this BS, man. It's, it's epic. I love it. And it gets even better. It gets even better. This next one, a little bit long. So let's go ahead and sit through this real quick. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about issues. Your big idea is universal basic income, what you call a freedom dividend of $1,000 a month for every adult in the country. But a number of progressives, for instance, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is supporting your opponent, Bernie Sanders, she says it's regressive. Hi, I'm here to tell you why a value-added tax with a universal-based income is still progressive. 
Imagine this is a rich citizen and this is a poor citizen and this is the government. Both citizens get $5 every month, but the poor citizen spends it on food and the rich citizen spends it on electronics. Since a value added tax is a tax on spending, they pay different amounts back into the system. And that it is not enough to, to make up for the basic income inequality in this country. Well, Americans know instinctively that if you put $1,000 a month into our hands, it would find its way right back into our Main Street economies, make our families stronger, healthier, mentally healthier. It would create hundreds of thousands of jobs. It would improve the buying power, increase the buying power of over 90% of Americans. And when I talk to Iowans right here in Creston and other part of the state, they see that their Main Street stores are closing that they're getting sucked dry because tech companies like Amazon are soaking up $20 billion in value a year and not paying a dime in taxes. This is not working for people here in Iowa and around the country. This is why we need the freedom dividend to actually put buying power directly into our citizens' hands. The other big complaint about this idea is that instead of being on top of some government assistance programs that the Freedom Dividend would be instead of some of those government programs. On your website, you talk about, quote, consolidating some welfare programs to pay for the Freedom Dividend. And your spokesman says the Freedom Dividend is meant to be an alternative to means-tested welfare programs like food stamps and housing vouchers. So liberal critics say that basically this Freedom Dividend is going to keep struggling Americans still struggling. Well, I talked to a family here in Iowa, and what their frustration is is that the better they do, the less they get in benefits. That doesn't work for families. It doesn't work for the American people. So with a freedom dividend, if you get this $1,000 and you start working and doing better, then you get to keep everything you make. This way, the incentives are aligned with both the family and our country. And many people are frustrated with the makeup of our current programs. We have to be able to improve on what we have in a way that will actually boost both families and the economy. Oh, snap! Oh, snap! Oh, snap! So I have to say, though, I have to give it to Chris. He does do a better job of actually, uh, I guess, you know, making Yang defend his points. He does set up Yang pretty good to defend those points, but he does a lot more, uh, you know, research than MSNBC. They're just trying to smear him as a uh, whatever, you know. <laughs> it's it, I have to give it to Chris, so I have to say that at least. But you know, since Chris seems a little bit confused, uh, Andrew handled him pretty well. But let's go ahead and just address a couple of extra mis misconceptions, right? So, um, AOC is just saying a lot of the stuff she says because she's bankrolled by Justice Democrats. And they're all allied with Bernie Sanders, so she would, would spread some misconceptions. She's not really about, you know, putting humanity first. She's not really about actually trying to do what's best for the people. She's about her ideology. She's putting her ideology ahead of the people, as most people do nowadays, either put the party or the ideology ahead of, you know, what's actually best for the people. That's what separates Yang from so many people. And as far as consolidation and stuff like that goes, um, you have the option to take UBI or the government handouts. So when Yang is talking about consolidation, he's referring to the amount of people who willingly forego their benefits to get the UBI because the UBI will get will have more for you. Imagine if you're two able-bodied um, married couple or just two you know people who live together, and now you have an extra twenty-four thousand dollars a year coming in, which would be a lot better than what two or three hundred dollars in food stamps maybe a $50 housing voucher, you know what I mean? It makes no sense. So when he's talking about consolidating consolidation, he's talking about those people who will forgo, willingly forgo, not that it's going to be a lot of these programs are just going to be cut or slashed. They will be willingly um, start to, you know, whittle away and be smaller because the UBI would be a more beneficial option. And a lot of people in government want to keep their government pie big, as big as possible. And Yang's, you know, UBI does the opposite of that. And they don't like that. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Finally, uh, you decided to say this week that you thought that the Democratic National Committee had made a big mistake in deciding not to hold any presidential debates on Fox. I guess really two questions. One, why did you decide to say it? And two, after you did, what was the reaction from the DNC? Well, it came up at an event here in Iowa. Uh, someone asked how we're gonna bring the country together. And I thought, well, if you're gonna bring the country together, you have to start by talking to Americans. 
Uh, and I, I pointed out this example where the DNC decided not to have any of the presidential debates on Fox, which I thought was a mistake. Uh, and I haven't had a direct conversation with the DNC. <laughs> I think they've been in touch with people from my team. Um, but I think this is common sense. Uh, you know, uh, to me, hopefully the DNC will adopt a different approach in the future because we have to bring the entire country together. The problems that face us affect all of us, and we need to, to come together as a country to solve them. Mr. Yang, thank you. We appreciate your coming on. Thank you for your time and safe travels on the campaign trail, sir. Thank you, Chris. Hope to see you in person here in Iowa. We're going to surprise a lot of people February 3rd. We like being surprised. All right. So I did skip the part about Evelyn Yang just because I don't want to bring any more attention or, you know, or, you know, because a lot of they've been trolled a lot about this kind of stuff. So and plus, you know, YouTube was just demonetized for even talking about the words that that involved what happened with her in that situation. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. But yes, Yang demolished uh chris wallace and it was it was excellent and so the last part you know he just goes on to talk about uh just dunk on tom perez again and just and utterly lays it into how the dnc is just not smart for alienating themselves from half the electorate that is just not smart at all it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy <sighs> so i don't know guys I do hope you guys enjoyed, and don't forget, over here you guys can find the Patreon, the Discord, the Twitter, and the merch. All merch proceeds do go to uh, Andrew Yang, So, and there are, I guess, quite a few selections of merch. I think you guys would like it, um, and it's pretty cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not bad designs, and again, 100% of the money goes right to Andrew Yang. Uh, well, not directly. I have to get paid first, and then I have to give to Andrew Yang, but yes, this is, we've raised a lot of money uh, just with merch, so you guys feel free to hop in there and you know, uh, don't feel guilty about when you buy it because it will go to Andrew Yang, right? So, um, also we do have, uh, the Twitter where I haven't been active in the last couple of days, but if you guys want to, you can feel free to hop on here. You know what I'm saying? I do post a lot of good stuff and, uh, we do have our discord, love discord people. They always, always dropping their opinions in discord. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's there for. And the last and final plug, um, well, next to last would be, uh, our Patreon. So, um, always remember that these videos are now brought to you by patreon um, if you want to get notified first about these videos uh, I usually post them here about a half hour to an hour before I upload so um, there's that there's plus there's all kinds of other perks here you know what I'm saying and the more people we get uh, in patreon the more of these perks that I'll actually be able to start dishing out so you know it's all it's all a it's all a team effort you know what I'm saying so yeah, anyways, shout out to my patrons, all five of you guys, you guys are awesome. Um, if any of you guys have not become a channel moderator yet, or if you don't want to, or if you have, if you're watching this, make sure you comment, you are that person, so you can get that channel moderation, because that's one of the secret things that you get whenever you're one of the first ten people to be a patron. Um, but yes, uh, the last and final plug, let's see here, yang2020.com, guys, you guys got to get this uh, three million deadline go, we, we got to do it, okay? It's going to be tight, it's going to be tough, but we can, we've done bigger goals than this uh, I, I really don't want us to have to extend a deadline by a day or two so you guys just make sure you get out here you get out here and you donate you know what i'm saying just do that you know what i'm saying do that do that i know i'm rambling right now but do that <laughs> all right guys that's all i got for you guys i hope i uh, i hope you guys like this second upload i know it's a little late but anyways yeah, i appreciate you and you appreciate me and uh we're all one big happy family anyway i love you guys <laughs> i'm gonna get off here i know i'm annoying i'm annoying i'm, I'm leaving i'm leaving bye bye